morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to have you all here. We've got some visitors this morning. Joanne is all the way from Florida. And uh, Bill and, and uh, Bill's grand, grandson from North South Carolina, right? So uh, welcome. And uh, glad to have you all settled. Maybe a little girl up, upstairs, Gary and Cindy, my father's granddaughter. We're glad to have Belle with us also. So. Just a few announcements in this uh, bulletin this morning. Um, today, after, after worship, we'll still have our, our last work day. Hopefully, it'll be our last work day for Bible school. Um, and there's also a reminder that this vacation Bible school will be held. Saturday, June 29th from 10 to 2, and we do have some flyers and um, registration forms held in the narthex page. So if you have anyone um, interested, maybe children, grandchildren, whatever, um, uh, pick one up, take one with you. Um, also, there's a work detail in the picnic woods will be held Saturday, June 1st. Um, and we just need to clean up the sticks and just put them on some piles to keep from recent mowing, make it look at least a little better. Um, the geraniums, um, if you signed up for geraniums, please see Gail as you take them with you today. And then finally, uh, we see prepare the permanent family of death to flow. We just found that out uh, Thursday, I believe it was Thursday or Friday. And, um, I have no, uh, she had no other details on that, so. Everything's taught, this grade five service. This grade five service, everything's private. Thank you, Janet. Um, so just keep Jerry and the rest of the family in your prayers. Um, I think, I think I will ask Jill to um, put an address, uh, address for Jerry on the, on the Narthex table next week, so that if you want to send her. Simply card, so I, I don't know the address, so you may, some of you may know, but we'll, we'll see if you get those if you want to. Is there anything else that we go to the congregation this morning? Nothing else? Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship as we listen to the prelude.
morning. You ever heard that expression? Are you all in? Well, I'm going to be speaking about all today. And I'm not talking about standing at all. I mean all, everything. In the Old Testament, we're going to look at a passage. And in seminary, they taught us three attributes of God. And they're omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence. How many ever heard those, those three phrases? Now, omni is a prefix. A Latin prefix, and it means all. Science, omni omniscience, all-knowing, omnipresent, he's always with us. And then omnipotence, he's all-powerful. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to add a couple, though. Omni gratia and omni amore. Gratia is omni all grace. And then amore is love. All love comes from God. Have you ever heard that expression? This was years ago. Can't we just all get along? Remember that? Someday we will. Can you imagine this election coming up? If everyone was in agreement, <clears throat> I'd say in very short time, we're going to live in a world uh, Similar to this, but not like this at all. Where we're all going to be in agreement. What a wonderful day that'll be. Amen. And we say that, but really think about it. Everyone will be in agreement. How about this one? Did you ever hear this? All of me, why not take all of me? So get your mind in that frame of reference. Let me read a couple passages to you. Christ Ephesians 1.21 is far above all principality. He's above it all. And power and might, dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also the one which is to come. And God hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all and in all. I think it's used five times in three verses. So all is an important word. How about 2 Corinthians 9, 8? I had mentioned omne gratia, all grace. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So today I'm going to be speaking about all. Have you given him your all? Is that your intention? Some people give their family their all. You need to give your family second to God. God needs to be first. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Jesus. Help us to focus our whole attention on you today. In our reading of scripture, in our prayers, in our songs. As we're sitting there thinking, help us to stay focused as much as possible. And help us to desire to give you all, everything we have. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. So then let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this day, for the many blessings that you've given us throughout this past week, for the rain and the sunshine today. We just thank you for each one here. May you give us each a special blessing. We, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for our sins. And we, as we celebrated last week his resurrection, we know that we would not receive the Holy Spirit because he said he had to return to the Father so that he could send the Holy Spirit. We just thank you for uh, today that we can celebrate Pentecost as you sent your, your son your Holy Spirit to us to, to lead us and to guide us. We just ask you to be with us through this service today and, and be and, and bless us that we would learn from you, from your word. We ask your Holy Spirit to touch Pastor Dave as he brings us the message today. And be with us through this coming week. And we know that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead us and guide us. So just help us to be open to, to the Holy Spirit. We just thank you for all that we have, and we just ask you would be with those who could not be here for whatever reason, be with especially those who are, have suffered and are on our prayer list, and those mentioned aloud now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day you've blessed us with. We thank you, as Gary said, for the rain that has come and for the sun that will come out and nourish the crops and all the plants that we have out there <clears throat> that we um, enjoy seeing the flower bloom this time of the year and, and be able to harvest the crops as they start coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and was set <clears throat> and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can those bones, these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to those bones and say to them, Dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will become life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh, come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will become life. <clears throat> then you will know I am the Lord. So I prophesied as commanded, and as I was prophesying, <clears throat> there was a noise, rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come the four winds, O breathe, and breathe into these skin, and they may live. So I prophesied as commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy, prophesy, and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. <clears throat> then you, my people, will know I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put, you, put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please read responsibly with me Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You are word is on my tongue. You know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make the head in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me. Even the darkness is not the darkness of the The night will shine on the dead The darkness is the light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I pray to you because I am here for you more than me. Your words are so My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my mortal body. All the days were made for me, and were written in your book before the world of men came to be. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, and 16, 14 through 15, 4 through 15. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Counselor comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify of me, about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things. You are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is good for me that I have to go away. Unless I go away, the comforter, the counselor, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin. Because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, for you can see me no longer. In any regard to judgment, because the prince of this world <clears throat> now stands condemned. I have much more to say unto you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come, what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I have mentioned this on a different subject a few times. you ever disappointed in yourself or not noticed something? that it was right in front of your face. I'm driving through Red Line yesterday, and I don't go past this uh, street often, but I go past it enough, and all of a sudden, I'm coming back, and I look off to my side, and there's an Audi's down there. I'm like, where'd that come from? Huh. You ever have that happen? It's a grand opening, but I'm thinking, I don't even remember them building anything there. <laughs> Sometimes we really got to Pay attention. And uh, that's what I want to talk to you today about, this all business. Have you given God your all? And, you know, when you go through scriptures, you'd be amazed how often that word is used. Now, I had written down earlier, all means all. And that's all all means. And we take it to mean whatever we want it to mean at the time. Well, I've given him a lot of my effort. I've given him Sundays. And no, he, he wants you all. We were reading in John 14, or John 15 and 16. I want to read verse 13 of chapter 16. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into whatever truth you feel like listening to. He will guide you into some truth. He will guide you into all truth. All truth. Then it says in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? <coughs> all things. <coughs> and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. All, all, all. You run across that word a lot. My main passage today is going to be in the book of Psalms. I'm going to preach from Psalm 139 just ever so briefly. And the reason I'm doing it is I have some scriptures here that pertain to God the Father, and that has to do with Christ, and has to do with us. I mentioned the omniscience of God, the omnipresence, the omnipotence of God. Jesus had those attributes too, and guess what? He passes those attributes to part in part to us. So we may practice our faith in him. We had read Psalm 139, the first two verses. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you've known me. You know when I sit, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. That's only one verse, but it's emphasizing what? The omnipresence. Of God, the omniscience of God, He knows all things. It says in 
1 John 3, 20, God is greater than our heart. And what's he do? He knows all things. It says in Psalm 147, 5, his understanding is infinite. He understands everything about us. He knows our thoughts. Then in verse 8, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me up. That's talking about not the omniscience, it's talking about the omnipresence of God. He's ever present. Psalm 46 1 says, The Lord is an ever present help in the time of need. See, if we would just get this in our mind all the time and practice the principles of God all the time. Wow, can you imagine? We'd do a whole lot of world changing, wouldn't we? A whole lot. Then in verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are one too wonderful to me, and that you know full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. God is our maker. David acknowledged that from the time of when I was in my mother's womb. You formed me. It speaks to his power, the omnipotence of God. Psalm 139 in seminary, <clears throat> it was one psalm that had all three of those attributes. Now there's many more attributes of God we can speak of. But let's stick with these three. And how do they pertain to Christ? And then how do they coincide with our Christian walk? In Matthew 9, Jesus was going through the, the town and he was preaching in this house and they dropped this man in front of him that had that was sick of the palsy. And Jesus saw their faith the ones that were carrying their friend. He says, your, sin, your sins are forgiven. And then the Pharisees were talking amongst themselves or in their mind. And it says in Matthew 9, 4, Jesus knew their thoughts. Jesus Christ is omniscient. Now, that doesn't mean we are, but he's passed some of that down to us. But in that passage, he says, to the Pharisees, he says, what's more important? Rather, I told this man his sins are forgiven or take up your bed and walk. He said, just so I can satisfy you, he told the man, take up your bed and walk so you know I have power. And then in regards to us, it says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, the Spirit of God, in the chapter on the Spirit of God, when, when God gave us the spirit, he gave us the mind of Christ. So this omniscient characteristics of God the Father, God the Son, is passed on to us by what? The spirit of God. We had just read in John 16, John 14, that he guides us into all things. Everything we need to know. Now, we're not all knowing, but we can know a lot more than we do by the Spirit of God. It says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we're to cast out our thoughts that are anti-God, anti-Christ, and bring every thought to the captivity of Christ in this spiritual battle. It says in Psalm 10, and I think it's verse 4, God has to be in all our thoughts. In Job 27, Job commented, the hypocrite, he has a problem because God's not in all his thoughts. He's not always delighting in the Lord, his maker. Then when it comes to the omnipresence of God, Hebrews 7, 24 says, Jesus lives forever so he can make intercession for us. That's wonderful. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ says the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in this part of eternity, the life of living, it says in Psalm 62.8, we're to trust in him at all times. All times. 
Now I know, I don't think I'm going to offend anybody by saying, I know none of you guys do that. And I'm not suggesting I do, but <laughs> all times. So Jesus has the omniscience of God. He has the omnipresence of God. Remember he told the disciples in Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of this age. John 14, 16, he said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and I will send you the comforter, and he will live with you, what? Forever. Do you see how these characteristics of God get passed down to us? If you came to Christ and you accepted Christ, you have some of these qualities. You have the omniscient ability to know more than we do. And then you have the omnipresence of God. You know that when you close your eyes in death, you're waking up in heaven and you're with him. And then the all power and the powerfulness of God. Hebrews 1.3 Jesus Christ, by his word, he holds everything up in this universe by the word of his power. That's pretty powerful. All things, it says. 1 Corinthians 1, 24, it says, Christ, the power of God. And then in Jude, it's, a, it's one I read often. Now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So God the Father had power. It says in Jeremiah 31, 32, 17, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth, and by thy great power you're stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Well, there's nothing too hard for the Father. There's nothing too hard for Christ. Remember in John when he was talking, he says he has the power to lay down his life. He has the power of what? To take it back. And that power that the Father had and the Son has, guess what? We're not gods, but we have similar. It says in Romans 15. Now the God of hope, let's talk to us, fill you with all joy, all joy. There's that word again, it keeps creeping up. And peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. What an awesome thing. The omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, the omniscient God has passed on these attributes to his Son and to us. Wow. Acts 2.17 says, In that day I pour out my spirit on all flesh, we're the recipients. Now we can only respond according to our faith. I often read scripture and I think, why aren't we doing so much more? Because we're weak. Because we are in our flesh. And 1 John 3, 8, 9 says, Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world, and he sins not. Then why do I sin? Because I'm in my flesh. Why do you sin? Because you're in your flesh. But we should be sitting less. The power of God. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by my might, not by might, nor by power, but God says what? By my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. He's saying not by physical might or your, your power that you have or authority, but it's by my spirit. We read, all grace shall abound toward us. In 2 Corinthians 9, 1. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 says, the spirit searches what? All things. 
1 Corinthians 12, 6, the, the gifts of the Spirit, works all things out in all things. All, all, all. 1 Corinthians 3, 21. Paul says, all things are yours. All things. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, we're to be temperate, self-controlled in what? All things. All. 2 Timothy 2, 7, God's given us understanding in all things. And then 2 Peter tells us this. Very popular passage of scripture. In 2 Peter, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Peter said it differently than Paul, and Paul said it differently than John. He's saying, you have the Spirit of God in you, and you can live righteously and holy and temperate, and you have knowledge and access to a lot of things. And I'm not talking about new revelation. I'm talking about revelation that's right in front of us, and oftentimes we miss it. There is that Audi's. I missed it. Why? I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. And then in Colossians 3, Paul's talking about putting on our new nature, which is born of the Spirit, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. And you're born of righteousness and true holiness when you're born again. He says in Colossians 3.10, and having put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ in the new creature is all and in all. Christ is all. That's my question for you this week, for me. Is he your all? And he is in all of your life, every aspect. Because if I want to see Jesus, I want to see him someday and say, I strive to make you all and in all of my areas of my life. Because he's given us the attributes, and whether you call them Omniscience, I'm the presence, I'm the potence, I'm, I'm the gratia, I'm the amore. Are you taking those attributes and utilizing them in your life by the spirit which God's given us? Or do you walk around like a lot of people, I have the spirit of God and act silly all the time. Oh, don't get me wrong, the spirit can make you joyful. But you know the type of person I'm talking about. And then they go out and live like the devil. <laughs> the Spirit of God is in us if we're born again. And he's given us all that we might, Christ might be in all, is in all, and be in all of our life. Amen? Amen. I, I strive the last few weeks to pick something different. And I'm not criticizing the Lutheran, Mexican, or any other, but they seem to be on the same cookie-cutter pattern. And I'll take a scripture, and I'll try to utilize something that's important to me. I hope these issues I'm bringing up are important to you, because they are important. Because we get in this cookie-cutter pattern, and before you know it, life's over. And we've missed out on a true blessing. Here's a question. Is Christ your all? Is he your all today? And he, is he in all areas of your life? That should be our goal today. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you.
thank you for your word. I thank you for Jesus. Help us to see the need to make you all, everything in our life, and in every area, all of our life. All means all, and that's all all means. Help us to realize that, respond to it, and live. You said in Ezekiel, preach to the bones and just preach to them and tell them to live. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm preaching to these folks and myself. And I pray that the Spirit of God brings life to these wounded limbs, causes all, causes all, causes all to walk in the Spirit. Help us in our daily walk, in our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from hell. God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins and as a call and ordained minister of the church of Christ and it's by Christ's authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. our Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
here. You guys know that song? No? Let's sing it. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.